The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you've got Python installed. I typically go to python.org and hit that download button, run through the installation. Um, to make sure it is installed, um, you can jump into your terminal on the Mac or command prompt on Windows. Um, and depending on your operating system, this command might be a little bit different, but for Mac, it is just simply Python 3. Uh, and you can actually do a dash V uh, and it's going to tell me that I've got Python 3. 11.4 installed, which is awesome. Next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to install man in the middle proxy. Okay? And I can do that through pip. So I can copy that and I can head over to my terminal. Now, if I was to run that, which I'm not going to do, what that will do, that would actually install man in the middle proxy package. It would install it system wide for all of Python, which may be a good thing, but it's usually not recommended. You don't want um, packages sitting system wide it causes conflicts and there's things that you might not want to use. So what I typically do is I run a virtual environment. Um, I use the tools available within Python. Uh, so I use something like this, so Python 3 dash M. I'm going to invoke the virtual environment and then I'm going to give it a name VNV and enter on that. What that's going to do is you'll see on the right hand side here, it's created a little folder called VENV. Um, that is basically allowing me to install packages into this sort of, uh, you know, directory here, uh, which means that it's not available system wide, which kind of contains it all, which is really nice. So installed into anything I install will be installed into site packages here rather than system wide. So now that I've done that, I can actually go ahead and do that pip install man in the middle proxy. Oh, no, I can't. I need to be in the virtual environment first, almost. Almost got me. Uh, so on the Mac, that's as easy as type in source. VNV. Uh, see how my memory goes. I think it's bin and I think it's activate. Perfect. Okay, cool. So now <laughs> I'm in VNV, which means that anything I install will be installed into site packages here rather than system wide into site packages where my Python is installed. So finally, I can do that pip install man little proxy hit enter on that. That's going to go ahead and download all of that. And then it's going to update my um, site packages to include man in the middle proxy. You can see that happening here on the right. A whole bunch of other packages that it relies on are being installed here as well. Um, and that's just one of the other reasons why you never want to have this installed system wide. There's a high chance that you will encounter conflicts between different packages and modules, versions and all that good stuff. Um, so this just self contains it here. So um, we're actually pretty close to getting man in the middle proxy running. There's a couple of things we need to do. So what we'll do is we will clear the screen one more time. Uh, and then what are we going to do? We are going to, first of all, it's going to sound a bit weird. We're going to make sure we've got a phone that's on the same Wi-Fi network. So I've got an iPhone here that's on the same Wi-Fi network, which is good. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to point this phone's proxy to the IP address of this computer. So first of all, I need to figure out what is the IP address on Windows. It's IP config on Mac and Linux. It's IF config. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so I've run IF config, and as you can see, there is a whole bunch of network adapters that have sort of appeared. Uh, the one I'm interested in is EN0. Now, I know that one because we're at EN0, uh, and I could see that it has, uh, oh, that's EN2. Okay, it's fine, EN0, EN4. God forbid they're in order. Where's EN0? Let's go. Here we go. Awesome. So, this is telling me that my IP address is 192.168. 1.26. Now let's memorize that 1.26. Okay, got it. Awesome. 1.26. So let's clear that. First thing we're going to do is we're actually going to run man in the middle proxy. Now, because I am in my virtual environment, and when I run man in the middle, man in the middle proxy, it'll boot up man in the middle proxy, which is awesome. So give that a second. That's going to start up man in the middle proxy. And here it is. Now, if I control C out of that and yes to exit. What I'll do is I'll just quickly demonstrate how this virtual environment is different to my system environment. So if I type in the word deactivate, deactivate, okay, you'll notice first of all that the VNVs disappeared uh, and now I'm just in my normal sort of shell, I'm in my normal environment. And again, if I type in man in the middle proxy, so up key, up key and hit enter on that, not found. It does not know what man in the middle proxy is. So it's really self-contained just in my virtual environment. So again, to reactivate, I can go up, 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 and I'll get to source vin bin activate, hit enter on that. And here we are in back in the virtual environment, which is cool. And again, I can go man in the middle proxy, and that's now running. So that's now running on 192.168.1.26, which is my internal you know, IP address. Yours will be different. Um, and you notice here that it's all traffic on port 8080. Awesome. So now that I've got the man in the middle proxy running, I need to set up a couple of little things on the iPhone to make this work. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to settings. Then I'm going to go to my Wi-Fi. Under Wi-Fi, I'm going to hit the little I 
and under the eye, I'm going to scroll down to Configure Proxy. In there, I'm going to hit Manual. Now, if we recall, my IP address was 192.168.1.26. Yours will likely be different. Uh, and my port, if you recall, is 8080. I'm going to hit Save on that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to need to download some certificates from Man in the Middle Proxy. So to do that, I'm going to go to Safari. I'm going to navigate to Man in the Middle man in the middle dot it m i t m dot it so hit the go button on that and now you've got this option to install certificates so we'll, let's pick our operating system in this case it is ios um, let's go ahead and get them so hit the green one on that so the website is trying to download a configuration profile do you want to allow this yes i'm going to allow this okay i'm going to do it for the iphone and it's been downloaded now there's still two more steps to go so first thing we need to do is go to our settings and in our settings, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the main page. You'll notice now that there is this profile downloaded that appears. I'm going to hit, uh, tap on that one. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the top right and say install. Okay, passcode goes in. I'm going to install those. Now, this is where I always get tripped up and this is where you need to pay attention. Just because they're installed doesn't mean they're enabled. So what we need to do now is, as a final sort of step, is we need to go back to our settings uh, let's go back to our settings and from there we're going to go to general about I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom and we're going to go to certificate trust settings in there we are going to hit this slider that says enable man in the middle proxy and it's giving us a little warning because it's like hey do you know what you're doing because if somebody's just sent this to you to set it up they technically could see all the traffic going through this phone so obviously we're setting up ourselves so we trust ourselves so we're going to hit continue on that uh, once that's done we are now ready to play around with man in the middle proxy. So back to the terminal just quickly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit, uh, where are we? I'm going to hit Z to clear it. And then on the phone, I'm going to load up booking.com, um, which is the app. And straight away, you can see just the amount of traffic that's coming through on booking.com. So I can sort of scroll through and there's just a ton of different, um, you know, API calls that are occurring. And I can actually have a look at some of those. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a bit more space. Now we're green that one a bit bigger. Uh, and we might clear that one more time. So now that we've got man in the middle proxy running, we can have a look at some of these different um, flows. Okay, so what do we got? So we've got HTTPS, cool, post, uh, mobile.squeak. Not sure what that is, but it's requesting, it's doing a post. Um, and it's going ahead to mobile.squeak in the mobile-appsbooking.com JSON URL. Um, it took almost an entire second um, to do something. So let's have a look at the request. It's got all the sort of details here. If I scroll down, we can actually have a look at the request payload uh, and its response. So the response here just says, okay, but what's in the request payload is quite incredible. So it's got a whole bunch of information about me. So it's got my device ID, um, what version I'm running, an affiliate ID, network type. So it's, it's, it's telling itself, hey, you're on Wi-Fi. Don't know why that's important. Maybe it is. Um, device sending time. That could be useful for figuring out time zones and that sort of stuff, uh, which is a, you know, not really a location, but it can definitely pinpoint me down to a time zone. A um, bit more about the app. Now, obviously, a lot of this stuff is used for sort of debugging and crash reports, uh, but sometimes it's used for, you know, when you see things like affiliate ID, it's probably used for advertising or, you know, that type of thing. Um, screen type. Uh, don't know. Oh yeah. Okay. What screen I'm on? Maybe. Uh, feed ID, page order, whole bunch of information. Then we've got here some of the images, some of the timestamps. So nothing too crazy as far as I could tell. AI content discovery app did become active. That's weird. Uh, what else? Authorization allow background location updates false so far. Um, that might become true. Uh, if I enable it. In fact, let's. Do the scary thing and test that. So, mobile squeak. I wonder if it will tell us allow background location updates false. I wonder if I go into here, and let's go into yeah. You know, let's do a little bit of a search destination. Uh, let's go around current location. Okay, let's go to my settings. Let's let's do the scary thing and enable. Mm, yeah, let's. Why don't you ask me? Okay, when you're next using it. Okay. Let's use that. Okay, let's let's allow once. Okay, I've only allowed it once. Uh, let's have a look and see what that will do. So I get out of that one. So Q to get out of that one. Uh, and I'm looking for mobile.squeak. So what I can do is I can press F to filter and I can type in something like mobile. Okay, cool. 
Uh, let's have a look at the most recent one that's just triggered off there, which happened quite recently. Uh, and okay, it's a lot less. Oh, there we go. So we got user latitude, user longitude. That's my exact user. <laughs> my house. So I might just, no offense, guys, might just blur some of that out. Uh, a bit more about the user version. Uh, again, network type, device sending time. Okay. So yeah, look, a lot of this stuff is required to enable the search. So not a big deal. But I would be hoping that, you know, probably need to go through the terms and conditions that they're not sort of sharing that with advertisers and that type of thing because then it just becomes a bit creepy. Um, and I don't always want my location given to advertisers, especially when it is so exact. Um, so yeah, okay, another squeak's gone off while we're looking at that squeak. Okay, there's my location again. Uh, don't remember. Okay, that's funny. It's happening quite a bit, actually. That was 21 seconds ago. Let's open up the, the app. Oh, there it goes again. Oh, okay. I wonder if I change... Oh, okay. So even more in this squeak. Oh, bad URL. User info. Now, I've never logged into this app, so this is quite interesting. So quite a bit going on. Now, um, still not sure what mobile sync experiment payload affiliate ID. Yeah, pretty full on. So um, honestly, this is this is, this is is how you set up uh, Man in the Middle Proxy. Uh, this is really just an intro video to allow you to start playing. Uh, I do have some big ideas. I have some ideas around building some sort of man in the middle proxy app, uh, dash app, dashboard, if you will, uh, that captures a lot of this information. And then we can build some smarts that will scan each of these payloads to identify examples where maybe it is sending things like user latitude and user longitude and device ID. Um, because I think some of that information is a little bit private. And whilst it might be useful for the app to operate and you know it's going to booking.com that's good i'd be concerned if it was going to you know an advertiser for example and there you have it that's how you install man in the middle proxy now uh, we really only brushed over the you know one percent of what this tool chain offers um i do want to make a lot more videos on the python api and how to interact with that i think it's a really powerful tool to be able to save some of those flows um, that come through um, even intercept and replay them and modify them which is kind of cool uh, if this was useful, please consider, if you haven't already, subscribing. Uh, that really helps out the channel and build the community that we've got here. We're about 12,000 odd strong, which is absolutely incredible. I can't believe that. If you're familiar with my earlier videos from a couple of years back, I was just going for a thousand and we somehow 10x plus that, which is incredible. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it really helps motivate me to make more videos to share with the community that, as, as it grows. Um, but yeah, thanks so much and uh, yeah, have a good night.